Welcome back to this week's Blender tutorial. First things first, I've got to say thank you for everyone who subscribed. I think I hit our 100 subscribers and I'm super stoked about that. So once again, thank you. We're going to be doing an overview of guns, especially 3D modeling weapons. All the tips in this video aren't going to be Blender specific. So even if you're using something like Maya, all of these tips will be transferable. I'm going to go try to break down all the step-by-step -step processes of modeling guns and any kind of parts that you should find difficult and how to deal with them. Guns and even any 3D weapons are one of the most important things, especially when it comes to games. Because if you think about it, you're playing a first person shooter game, the gun is going to occupy 30% of your screen for the entirety of the gameplay. So it's going to be the one thing the users and the players are going to be looking at the most time. So if that is where the quality is lacking, it's going to be noticeable. Whereas when you're doing assets around the map, unless someone is specifically going and looking around all the corners of the map, those kind of low quality or low poly things don't really matter because you only see them now and then for very short periods of times. But the weapon is going to be in the field of view consistently. So you should really take some time to model it and just make it look great. With that being said, let's get into it. The first thing we need to do before we even place a single vertice is reference. Now, when making weapons, just generally actually anything in 3D modeling is don't do it without reference. Just, just don't. You're just making it harder for yourself. The quality is gonna be lacking. Once again, there's just, there's no point in not using a reference. I cannot stress that enough. Now, you do get different types of reference. You might get concept art reference directly from something you've drawn or from a concept artist if you're working with the team. Concept art can vary from very rough sketches, you know, small colored um, 2D images. You could also get it a little bit more fleshed out to something a little bit more high res, more detail that gives you clear indication of textures, you know, blemishes, markings. Or if you don't want to draw or don't have a concept artist, and if you're modeling something from real life, simply just use a real photo, especially side view or front view photos. These will help tremendously. It helps you keep your scale right. It helps you follow all the details and your overall gun and even model will just be so much better when using reference. I might do a video on how to actually go about designing weapons, but that's going to be a whole other video on its own. If I add it into this video, we'll never get to the end of it. So once you have reference, then you can start moving on to the gun. Now, even though you're using a reference, you never have to follow the reference 100%. You always want to use it as a guideline. Some things from the reference or some things from 2D images just can't translate directly into 3D. And also maybe halfway through the process, you might find that you want to change certain things. So for example, this gun was modeled after this reference in the back here. There we go. Oh, it's inside the picture. Let's just move that out a bit. And as you can see, they're quite similar, but there are a few differences. For example, the scope has changed a bit. Instead of going for a simplistic scope, I've added some, I don't know, ornate metal bits. But the majority of the thing matches a bit. But like I said, you can change it as long as the general thing stays the same as the reference, you're heading in the right direction. So with references out of the way, let's get to building the gun. As with all forms of art, this part is the hardest part of the process, the blank canvas, the empty piece of paper, or in our case, the empty viewport. You have nothing on the table. There's no way to see where you're going. You don't really know where to start. This is by far the hardest part. So once you overcome this hurdle, the rest of the parts or the process just kind of fall into place and you slowly get a groove and the process just becomes easier. So our main priority now is just getting something into the 3D viewport. The best way to do this is what I call blocking out. So you start to tackle the bigger shapes or the bigger pieces of the gun. So as an example, we'll take this 
orange gun over here. And I've already pre-blocked out, as you can see, just some of the big shapes. So the handle, the body, the barrel. I haven't done any detail modeling. All of the shapes are very simplistic. But once you have the bigger shapes down, you can then slowly start adding detail or removing bits where you think is necessary. So let me work with you to make one. We'll start with this gun. So first I'm just gonna kind of identify where the biggest points are. For me right now, the biggest point is the handle, probably the barrel, and then maybe the center body and the magazine. So all you wanna do is add a cube, scale that all the way down and then let's move it over all of my key buttons will just be here down on the right in case any of you get lost with some of the shortcuts that i'm using so i'm going to toggle into edit mode i'm going to go into x-ray mode and then vertice select mode so for the handle which is going to be the hardest shape because it's quite smooth but a very awkward not very geometric shape for the rest of the parts, like the barrel, they're just gonna be squares with bevels on them. Very simple. So let's start with the handle. The approach I've found the best for this, you take the cube and then you just slowly follow the edges. So I'm gonna start with the left side and then I'll clean up the right side later on. So select one side and just extrude it and just keep extruding it following the curve of the pattern or the, the image. Make sure you're looking at the picture directly from the side view, or what you're gonna wanna do is just lock your movements to the X axis, so you're not moving things back or forwards, you're only moving them left to right. And you just wanna kinda get a general outline of the thing. We're gonna use a subsurface modifier later on, so you don't have to worry if your outline isn't perfectly smooth. I'm just focusing on the wooden part of the handle, whereas this almost carbon fibery frame you could do as a separate piece. Then now let's just clean up the right side. Just slowly moving these pieces into place. I am rushing it a bit to make sure that this tutorial is under half an hour, but you're going to probably want to take your time, especially on more detailed handles. There we go. Okay, so now we have a basic frame of the handle. It is way too fat, so let's hit S and then Y just to scale it down. Now I'm going to hide the reference by either hitting H or by just hitting the I icon on the top right. So we've got our handle. It's the right shape, it's way too square, and it lacks a little bit of refinement. So let's go to the modifier tab and add a subsurface modifier, and I'm going to hit it up to three. Already, it's looking fantastic, but it's still a bit simple, but one dimensional. So let's go into edit mode and add two loop cuts. You can just scroll your wheel to add more or take away loop cuts and I'm just gonna hit them in the center. Now I'm gonna scale them up on every axis except the Y axis. I don't want them to be fat, so I'm gonna hit Control Y or Shift Y, sorry. And that's now gonna scale on every axis except the Y one. And just a bit there. Let's also shade smooth. There, looking good. Now, I'm just going to select these two front bits by alt clicking. That's going to select the line. You could also just shift click to select multiple ones. I'm going to grab it back and just slide along the X axis a bit. And then same with these ones. I'm just going to grab them, slide them on the X axis a bit. So far it's looking good. I'm going to select all the inner loops and I'm just gonna scale them on the Y axis a bit just to give the hand a little bit of thickness. Next thing to do is handles are oftentimes fatter in the middle, a little bit thinner at the top. So I'm just gonna see where the middle is and I'm just gonna select a few ones and then I'm gonna click proportional editing 
and then I'm just going to leave it on the smooth mode. Once I've selected that, you're going to want to hit S to scale, and then you use your scroll wheel to adjust how big the proportional editing is. So S, adjust the proportion, and then I'm just going to scale it a little bit on the Y, just to give the handle, you see, just a bit of a curve. And for the time being, if your handle was perfectly smooth, this actually could function as the handle. But oftentimes, especially with old guns, they normally have some kind of marking or some kind of grip towards the center of the handle. So if you need to make one of those, what you can do is go to X-ray mode, change your mode to face select. And then now we're just gonna shift and we're gonna select all the faces. Once we have all the faces, I'm gonna hit I to, there we go. Once we kind of get the shape we want, then I'm gonna hit S to scale. See, I wanna make sure proportional is turned off. S to scale and then just Y and I'm just gonna scale it a little bit inwards. Now we have the dent. So now one way would be to add another layer as those grips or what you could do is just hit I again bring it in a bit and now scale it outwards. Now we've created a seam and we have that perfectly in lane grip for our handle. Let's add our reference again. Maybe want to scale it just down a tad bit, but there you go. Already we've got a handle. It's looking good. Okay. Now that we've done the handle, that's definitely the hardest part out of the way. The rest of the pieces of the gun are going to be rather simple. So instead of showing them all, I'm just going to show one and you will kind of get the idea from there on. So the next big piece that I see or the next distinguishable piece I see is the magazine. So I'm just going to add a cube, scale it way down. I'll try to continue explaining and talking constantly, but oftentimes when working, you almost start to get into like a silent mindset. So I'm sorry if I forget to talk and I'm just kind of working in the background. So let's grab that up, scale it down and let's line it up a bit. Now 2D doesn't really show everything. So you have to almost guess a bit what kind of shape is actually is. Oftentimes if the concept artist has given you multiple views or multiple perspectives, that'll help you clear up. Or if you can just talk to them and they clearly explain what they were going for. Better yet, if you're the one who drew it, you can just, you know, you obviously knew which direction we're taking this. So for this, I'm going to assume the mag is almost like a hexagon with small indents in it. So let's go into x-ray mode and just line the cube up as best as possible. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to add two loop cuts and scale them on the z-axis like so. Okay. Now I'm just going to take away the reference, make it easier to work with. And let me select the top and the bottom and then scale that along the Y axis. Okay. That shape is kind of looking right. I might actually Oopsie. Just select the inside and scale it down the Z axis just to make it a little bit more even. Okay. Next now, I think I'm going to add just some bevels. Once again, you're kind of just focusing on the main shape. You won't want to get too fine with the details, but you should add at least enough detail so that you can clearly see what the object is. So I'm just actually going to select these inner ones and then hit control B just to give them a small bevel. Okay. Now with the next reference is small indents. So I'm going to now try and get the kind of the right shape, almost like a cookie cutter to get that indent out. I'm thinking of doing it with a UV sphere. I'm just going to scale it down all the way and then I'm just going to move it up. I 
And then I'm just going to try my best to align it properly. There we go. Now let's move it to the outside. Like so. And then I'm just going to select half of it and then just move it all the way out. Now I've made almost like a pole shape. Before now, now that I've got the cookie cutter ready, I'm just going to duplicate it because I'm going to use this over and over again to cut other shapes. So let's move it to X and then let's move it to the center of that. Obviously, you want to make sure it's perfectly lined up. I'm just trying to save a bit of time. So I'm doing a little bit of uh, almost an estimate here. Let's hide the reference. Grab that, move it down. Oh, I see my shortcuts have turned off. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. So now I'm just going to hit Control Shift B and difference and just do this for all of them. Control Shift B and Control Shift B. And there we go. We've got a pretty good looking mag shape. Then we'll just once again rinse and repeat. Then you just look for the next biggest part and it'll probably be the barrel or maybe the body. And then you just slowly work it out. Once you've blocked out the majority of the gun, then you're going to now want to start adding finer details like the screws, the triggers, all those kind of small parts. Because once you, if you do the block out method, it's quite quick and you'll kind of see if the gun is going in the right direction. It's the best time to see if you should just, you know, scrap the idea and work on something else or, you know, if it's worth continuing. So like I said, the block out, really good method. At least I find it quite helpful. Let's go to the next step. As you start to add more and more pieces to your model, your scene and especially your scene collection is going to come become overcrowded very quickly. There's two ways to avoid this. First thing is just by adding new collections. You can just do this by right clicking in your scene collection. This way, kind of like files work, you can just separate things. Oftentimes I like to separate them into categories. I'll normally have the main body as a category, the scope as one, the magazine, sometimes the handle if it's very complex, or even the barrel if it's a very complex part. The next way is just labeling things correctly. For example, labeling things like handle, left body panel, scope, things like that. It's way easier when you have problems or you want to texture things. And instead of having to look for something called cube 17 out of 400 different cubes, Instead, you can just search handle and quickly find the part that you're looking for. It will just make your life a lot easier and any kind of problems further along in the process, you can handle them a lot quicker. The next would be once you've modeled it and you're happy with the form would be to texture it. Now, I'm not going to do a full texturing video or else this tutorial will stretch well over half an hour. Instead, I'm going to just give a brief overview of kind of practices you should take when coloring and texturing a gun. So I like to stick between two and six different colors or materials. If you use too many materials or too many colors, the thing will come quite messy or almost busy. Whereas when you stick to a few colors, the object often stays uniform and it looks quite professional. So for example, I've used three colors here. I've used white, as my primary color, black as a secondary color, and then copper as the third color or as an accent color. The rest of the things, some things, you know, won't take up a color slot, I'd say, is things that just actually have a material. So things like glass, metal, steel, you know, for screws, bolts, scopes, and lenses. Those kind of things are just going to be their own material no matter what. But as you can see, even though I've only got those three as my primary colors, I still have things like glass, wood, steel, all these small little bits. But oftentimes I say three to four 
is kind of the sweet zone and you want it to have primary, secondary, and then an accent color. So your primary one should always take up the majority of your space. And then, you know, secondary takes up the second amount of space. And then accent one should almost be used as a highlight color just to almost attract attention to very little detailed spots, but it shouldn't be overwhelming. And even though if you follow those steps, the best way to approach this is just practice. The more guns you do, the more things you texture, the better each process will get. That's really, there's no shortcut around it. You're gonna have to board a lot of guns. You're gonna have to try a lot of different color themes until you find one that works for you. Modeling a gun or any kind of 3D asset is quite a hard task. And oftentimes on the industry level, it's separated with multiple people. One person would do the concept art, another might do the 3D modeling, someone else will do the 3D texturing, and then someone will import it into the game. But if you're doing it by yourself, it's quite a lot to take on. So you should definitely try and split it over multiple days or at least multiple sessions. Take breaks between things. Don't have to try and finish it all in one day. You know, rather slow and steady instead of quick and burning yourself out and just getting frustrated with the process. Good things take time. And there's no point in rushing it. Once again, you should always also ask for help if you can. You don't have to tackle it all alone. Hopefully this helped. This wasn't a very detailed tutorial, more brief overview of the key points I thought was right. If there's enough people interested in this, I might look at making a five part series by taking it slowly, step by step, modeling a gun from concept art to final. But that'll only be a future video. For the time being, I'll just quickly briefly uh, go over the points that I think are the most important. So firstly, reference. You've got to use a reference. There's no way to get around with that. Then block it out. Start with the bigger pieces, focus on the overall shape rather than just focusing on the small details. Next is using collections. Make your workflow neat, organized, gonna be way easier to work with. And then with coloring and texturing, try to avoid doing too much. Sometimes less is more. Keep the color scheme simple and the textures simple. And I think if you follow that step with a ton of practice, you'll be making super awesome guns in no time. Once again, thanks for watching and hopefully this helped you guys. See you in the next video.